good. Mm. That is good. All right, I hope you have your Bibles with you this morning. No man goes to war without a weapon. Amen. And the Bible tells us that we are to war, that we are in a war. Many battles are fought in a war, folks. Many, many, many. Sometimes Satan wins a battle. Sometimes the Lord wins a battle through you in your war. But I know ultimately who has won the war. No question about it. I want you to turn to the book of Jeremiah, please. Jeremiah chapter number 10 with me this morning. If you'd like to stand as we open the pages of the book. Jeremiah chapter number 10 and verse number 1. Jeremiah chapter number 10, verse 1. The infallible text says, Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also it is in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord God Jehovah, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Father, bless the book now. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Jeremiah gives out a very simple warning. He tells you that if you do not have the written record of the Word of God, you do not have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, that you can certainly be dismayed by all that's going on around you. The heathen have always looked into the heavens and marveled at the creative hand of God. They have built to that uh, all kinds of uh, buildings, uh, uh, pyramids and structures and so forth into the heavens so that they may observe the seasons and the times. Not knowing the word of God, therefore they create all kinds of superstitions as it relates to the heavens. If you pick up a newspaper or some kind of a document that has astrology on it, you are reading superstition that has been created by those that know nothing of the revelation of the word of the living God. So the Bible tells us to be not dismayed at the signs of the heavens and of the seasons. The scripture tells you that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Night after night of their speech, there is certainly a message to be understood in the heavens. But unless you have the word of God, unless you've been taught in scripture, unless you know the Lord and the Holy Ghost is living in you to discern scripture for you, then it still remains an enigma as to what's going on over your head. But there should be no doubt in anybody's mind if you walk out at night and look up into the stars, the Lord said, count them, Abraham, go ahead. I'll give you a few thousand years, take your time. Go ahead, if you think you can, count them. Of course, Abraham could not count them. But what God was doing was showing Abraham his majesty, his glory, that of the Creator. And he said to him, now look at that. I made everything that you see, Abraham, as far as your naked eye can behold. I own it all. I made it, and all I did is say, bara. That is the Hebrew word, come into existence. And so it did, by the creative power of Almighty God. I don't know everything there is to know about the heavens. I certainly don't know everything there is to know about the creation. But I know the Creator. That's good enough for me. I know the one who brought it into existence. I am no expert on the spirit world. I, fact is I am no expert on anything. But I do know him that liveth from everlasting to everlasting. And that's the main thing that I need to understand. If you log on to the Lion of Judah to the website, if you, I don't know if you ever do or not, I would encourage you to do that because it is full of information. The teaching that has been taught in Sunday school in here and the preaching in the Wednesday night services, the special singing that you just heard. This is all uploaded to the Lion of Judah dot org and you can look at that 24 seven and pick up this material. But if you log on to the Lion of Judah anytime today or yesterday or the day before, you'll see underneath that video that's right in the center of the screen, a testimony of a woman who sent this in to me about three days ago. This is one of the most remarkable things that this preacher has heard in his 
his 35 years here as the pastor of Temple Baptist Church. I am no novice when it comes to the spirit world. I've heard and seen an awful lot of things in my ministry. And what this woman said to me, she wanted me to know because she knew what I had been teaching. She said she saw a video on YouTube of the ministry of what I've been teaching here at Temple. I did not upload that video to YouTube. There's a lot of people out there that are taking these videos and they're uploading them to different websites all over the world so people can get this information out. There's an awful lot of people are receiving what you are receiving from the Word of God. As a matter of fact, right now, I'm preaching to more, far more than what's in this building because this is going out live across the internet and the people are logging on and they want to know what's going on. They live in areas where they either have no churches or they can't get the truth where they live. And we live in a day where the Bible says that there come a famine in the land for the word of the living God. Hear her testimony and I'm going to preach on it. Here's what she said to me. She said, Dear Pastor Lawson, I just watched a teaching you did on the dangers of Kundalini Yoga on YouTube. I was teaching yoga at a martial arts school 15 years ago when the Lord Jesus Christ delivered me. During class, praise God, while I had experienced no significant problems when I was practicing yoga, once Jesus pulled me out, all hell broke loose, literally. I want you to listen carefully to her testimony. I had demons manifesting in my home, tormenting me night and day, appearing in my mirrors and physically manipulating objects in my home. I even had swarms of flies invading one room of the house. I was unable to find a preacher who understood or knew what to do. How sad indeed. And in desperation, I turned directly to Jesus himself. Hallelujah. And to searching the scripture, the Lord Jesus has since delivered me from these demonic entities. But it was a process and not immediate. And so therefore, she sent me this testimony. She said, I thank God that you're speaking out against this practice. And I know you have probably endured some ridicule for it. Please keep me in your prayers. May God bless you and your ministry, Jonna. I've never met this lady, probably never will, on this earth. But what she said rings true. There is no doubt in my mind whatsoever that there's an awful lot of people out there in churches and other places in this country and around the world that are head over heels in this. And while they're in it, they do not realize the powers that they are calling forth into their own lives. She said some things in this that are very, very instructive. And I want by the grace of God this morning to open up what this lady said and try my best to show you how this can relate to you because some of you may be exactly where she was. The first thing that I want you to notice about it is what this woman said. She said, I was teaching a, I was watching, a, I watched the teaching you did on the dangers of Kundalini Yoga on YouTube. Now, my friend, you're not going to find a lot of warnings on Kundalini Yoga on the internet outside of individual sites of these people who are constantly, we call them watchdogs. They're out there, they're all over the place, and they're trying to warn people. But the truth of the matter is, and it's such a sad thing indeed. That if you type yoga into your internet, into the internet search engine, Google or whatever you use, you would be amazed at the churches that you pull up that are practicing yoga. Instead of going to the house of God for light and salvation and understanding of the word of God, you're going to walk into a hell hole of darkness that's going to lead you away from the Lord. You say that's strong terminology. Let me tell you something. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe he's God Almighty. I believe he's the creator of the universe. I believe all glory and honor goes to his name. I believe I'm here today because he's been good to me and saved my soul. And everything that comes out of the mouth of this preacher is for the glory of God. I don't care anything about your church. I don't care anything about your religion. I could care less about who you think is great in this world. The Lord Jesus Christ is all that matters. Amen. So I know I'll make a lot of people mad. I don't care. I'm here today to do what God's called me to do. I'm here to warn you. And you need to be warned. Because churches are falling like dominoes all around you. If you want to take the time, type the word yoga. And then type Knoxville, Tennessee in. And you would be amazed at the churches. Baptist churches that you pull up in this area around Temple Baptist Church 
that are practicing yoga and offering yoga classes. There is no place in my Savior for yoga. There is no yoga around that throne in Revelation 5 and 6 when those 24 elders night and day cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. There's no room for Buddha. There's no room for Hindu. There's no room for Krishna. There's no room for anybody's God and anybody's religion. As far as God is concerned, every religion on the face of this earth is nothing but dumb. And so my friend, that's the kind of preaching that a man must hear to understand who we are and where we are. It is uncompromising. It is dogmatic. And it's to the point. I want people to understand. I couldn't care less about how you feel about your yoga. This woman was in it 24-7. She was in it head over heels. And while she was in it, make no mistake, this is what is so important. She wasn't foaming at the mouth. She wasn't wallowing in the fire. She wasn't feeling any demons moving through her life. She had no premonitions about horrible things happening. She was in a neverland, a netherworld, a, a, a kind of a peaceful existence that had been brought on by these demon spirits. I want you to understand that demons can make you feel real good about what you're in and your religion. A lot of people think, well, preacher, I thought demonic possession was manifested in adultery and drunkenness and lasciviousness and perversion and sodomy and all of the rest of this. The Bible is as plain as it can be that these are the works of the flesh. You don't need anything to go out and fornicate. It's in your genes. You don't need anything to go out and get drunk. You were born and bred in it. Demons enter into an individual when they come in on a higher plane into a spiritual existence. When a person begins to seek some kind of an enlightenment or some truth or some experience, he immediately opens the door for demons and they will step in. She was in yoga. She'd been in 15 years, or 15 years ago, she said that, that she was teaching yoga. And she'd been in it a long time. She was an instructor in a martial arts class. Now, I'm not going to get off into, into karate and, and, and all the rest of that stuff today. I'm not up here to blast martial arts. But I just want to use an illustration here. Here was a woman that was in it head over heels. She was an instructor. But something was wrong in her life. The Holy Ghost came to this woman and began to speak to her. And the Lord Jesus Christ convicted her of what she was doing because it was wrong. And when he did that, he got her attention and her peaceful world of yoga. This beautiful world of flowers and colors and, 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 and crystals and music and spirits and, and waterfalls and all this beautiful, beautiful world of yoga. The Holy Spirit came to her and said, this is wrong. And awakened her to her real need. And it did do enough to where she began to do something about it. And that, my friend, is when all hell broke loose. That's when her life started coming apart. Why? Let me tell you one of the reasons it did. It's because the Holy Ghost had begun to move in and lay claim again to what belonged to God. And Satan does not give up easily. Amen. She started seeing demons. She started seeing creatures in her house. Swarms of flies would come through. She heard voices. In plain words, every kind of demonic manifestation that Satan could throw at her, he threw it at her. But it all started when she started seeking the truth of God instead of the lie that she was head over heels into. Let me tell you something about getting into that. If you play with a little creature board, you like to run around and romance vampires. That's all seems so innocent enough in this generation today. Nothing's wrong about anything today. But the truth of the matter is, by opening yourself up into the spirit world, you're opening yourself up for demon possession. And when these demons come in, you may feel the most ecstatic feeling in your life. Why, you may feel wonderful. 
Why, you may feel like that. Where have I been all my life? For these spirit beings come in and they, they make you feel so good, so energized, so powerful, like good night. If these stupid Christians could only understand what a great world I've tapped into. And that, my friend, is the power of Satan to deceive. Because your, watch, your life is based upon some feeling you have or some feeling somebody has told you about that you know. And it is not based on the book and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me tell you something. One more time. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you know. I don't care what your experience has been. There's just one God. Amen. And His name is Jesus. Amen. There's just one God. And His name is Jesus. And there's power in His blood. Amen. To break the power of hell. I want every demon in this house this morning. I want you to get as mad as you can get. I want to get eyeball to eyeball with you. And I want you to know you were defeated at the cross. He made a show of you. And you go home and you try to curse me all you want to. And some of you have tried it. And I've watched curses come down on my family. And I'm here to tell you this day, your curse is going to turn on your own head. You cannot curse that which God has blessed. Amen. And I know what I'm talking about. I live in that world. I've been through hell like you wouldn't believe for eight weeks now. But that's okay. We're going to come through it and God's going to be glorified. And the sun's going to stand tall. And Jesus is Savior. And he's Lord. And that means a whole lot more coming from the mouth of somebody. If you tell me Jesus is Lord. And Jesus is your Savior. If you tell me that. When you've come out of hell itself. And you can still smell the stench of condemnation on your, on your flesh. And yet you've been saved. You've been redeemed. Amen. That means something. Amen. Some of you live in lily pads. You live a life of cream puff. You do. You've never had your faith tested for a minute. Your faith is just a bunch of thoughts and ideas in your head. It may be true. And all the stuff you believe may be right. But until you've been put into the iron furnace. till you've been put through the flame. Till you've been cast into a place where they want to destroy your soul. You don't know what it is to have it tried. But boy, when it's tried. And you start realizing one little victory. And then there's another little victory. And here's another little victory. I made it another day. Glory to God, I'm still here. I still believe. I'm still yes. Victory to victory to victory. That faith becomes precious. How dare you make mud of and mock the faith of Jesus Christ? How dare some place today call itself the church of God and have a kundalini yoga class inside the building? Amen! Jesus needs no yoga. He needs no demons. He needs no Krishna. He needs no Hindu. He needs no Buddha. He needs no Muhammad. He needs nothing of this earth. This earth would go into oblivion at a moment if he simply said the word. He doesn't need it. But note carefully. It was at the moment that she came out of her stupor. Out of her demonic peace. Out of that demonic world. Out of that feel good religion. That everything started busting loose. And some of you are in that place today. Some of you are in that place where it's all busting loose. It's all coming apart. You couldn't believe life could turn into such a hell for you. It's turned into more of a hell you ever thought could exist. Every day is nothing but pure hell for you. And you say to yourself, how could it be? But could it be because you're seeking a closer walk with Him? Could it be because you, when you say something, it's real now. It's not just a bunch of abstract words coming out of your mouth. Could it be because your faith is being tried? 
And when he's tried, it'll come forth as fire because if it's real faith, you will make it through. If it's real faith, you will make it. The old-fashioned Baptists used to preach this all the time. They preached the doctrine of the perseverance of the saints. I believe in it. So what is that, preacher? I believe if you're born again, you're kept by the power of God. And I believe that makes no difference how many times you fall. You fall a thousand times. That Bible said if a just man falls, he'll get up. You'll get up. You'll get up. You'll finish. You'll get up. You'll get up. And so the Bible says that the heathen are dismayed. So what does that tell me, preacher? That tells me that all around me, everywhere I turn, every church, about every church that I could think of to go to today, in this town, throughout this land, they're crawling with demons. Now here's what this lady said. She said, I had demonic manifestations in my home. I began to think about the Amy Teville horror. The movie, the Amy Teville horror, that's not a creation or fabrication, that's based on fact. I got on the internet one time and I looked that up. I thought, what's going on here? Amy Teville, New York. There's a two, three story house that sits up there, shows a photograph on the internet, check it out. I got in there, I got to digging around one time, I thought, now Lord, there's something going on here, show me. I did this, I think, four or five years ago. Here's what it showed me. I got in and looked at that thing, found out, yes sir, this stuff happened. Blood coming out of the walls and spirit manifestations and all kinds of stuff going on inside that house. The kind of stuff that drive a man insane. It really happened. But the people living in the house at the time that I checked it out on the internet, nothing had happened. And somebody was living there. I thought, something going on here. Something going on. What's going on, preacher? If you'll understand what I'm telling you, you'll understand the power of the Antichrist and Satan in the end of the days. What's happening? Well, if you dig a little deeper, you'll find out the stepfather in that house had a problem, had all kinds of problems, and they've been dabbling in the occult world and some kind of spirit world, and they've been messing around with stuff they shouldn't have been messing around with. And by fooling around this stuff, they opened up, a, they opened up that place for I, it literally just gave place to the devil. They literally opened it up for demonic manifestations. And man, did they ever come in. Now listen, folks. I don't believe in little green men coming down from somewhere up in yonder nowhere. Forget that junk. On this planet right here, according to the word of God, God's going to settle the issue of sin and salvation. And that's the issue of creation. And there's only one Savior of mankind, and that's the Lord Jesus who went to the cross. Ain't nothing out there but just, but just a bunch of stuff out there that doesn't mean a thing to you or me either one. I don't believe in little men coming up out of the earth. I don't believe that. I believe something can come up out of the earth. I believe something can come down from above. I believe stuff can come in this way. What is it, preacher? It's a demon. A demon, an impersonating spirit, a demonic spirit, an unclean spirit. We don't give the devil his due. We don't give him credit for being able to do what he can do. He can literally manifest himself. He can make himself seen. He can make himself known. He can move objects. He can do stuff. That's beyond the human mind to comprehend. Satan in the Bible is revealed as this cherubim, this fifth cherub that fell. With enormous power, even to say unto the Lord Jesus, all these kingdoms are mine, I can give them to you. And he showed them to him in a moment of time. He can do all this stuff. But he also is a master of manipulating the mind. He makes you think it's dead loved ones coming back and ghosts walking around through cemeteries and all kinds of stuff to get your mind off on the wrong thing. It's not people coming back, it's demons impersonating people. But they're real. They may look like the people. When a so-called ghost shows up in a house, if they even have a term poltergeist or geist, a belligerent ghost, like there's good ghost, shows up in your house. You got all this stuff flying through rooms. One woman called me down here, lives right outside of Sevierville. She said, I see stuff moving through my house. The people lived here before me, they do too. Stuff's in this house, it's moving around. And somebody, and most, most preachers, you call them up and they say, this isn't part of the progressive Make feel good, positive preaching. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Well, then shut up and get out of the church. Amen. Amen. 
I'm not an exorcist. I'm not in the business of going off somewhere to total strangers and casting demons out. I'm a pastor. But every once in a while, I'll sit right back there in that room and look at somebody and I'll say to myself, I'm looking at a demon. Sometimes they get real religious with me. Sometimes they come across as pious and holy. But you judge a tree by the fruit it bears, not by the words that come out of the mouth. You're dealing with a demon. Don't be fooled. Just because they look good, talk good, sound good, act good, smell good, know all the cliches, that doesn't mean it's right. That doesn't mean it's right. So the Bible says they're dismayed. This woman says that the very moment that she turned against her, her, her yoga, that these demonic manifestations started happening in her life. There are people in this house this morning, you're listening to me right now, You've had stuff happen to you, and you can't figure out why it's happening to you. Let me give you a little quick lesson, all right? There have been times in this preacher's life, and especially, I'm the kind, of you, if you know anything about me, you know I am. I get into something, I start digging. I dig. I'm a researcher. I dig. Sometimes I'm digging in the wrong place. Sometimes I, sometimes I start messing around and get let off and digging into something I oughtn't be in there. And it takes me a while in the Holy Ghost a while to say, now, son, where do you think you are? And I think, I'm in the wrong place, Lord. Get out. And I back out. You don't realize what one thing leads to another as you start checking something. You start running a line. You start running a word or running a thing. And you're checking it out. You're going into it. You find, who knows this? Who did this? Where did this come from? What's going on here? You get in all this stuff. First thing you know. You're allowing yourself to become subject to the very spirit that you're chasing. I have been in, this, I have been in the computer doing research, gone into my prayer closet, and stuff start moving. Stuff start moving. Stuff start moving. Voices start coming. No, there's something going on. What do you do, preacher? I bury my head in the carpet and I say in the name of Jesus Christ I belong to the Lord. I plead the blood on my soul right here and right now. I have no part in you and you have no claim on my life. In the name of Jesus you leave this house right now. Leave. And every time they leave and they don't come back. Now how if you got your head buried into pornography? What if, you're, what if you've got your face buried into something on the internet or you're out here messing around fornicating with some woman? It's not your wife. What are you out here drinking? Are you shooting up your drugs or whatever you're doing? You've got your head buried where you shouldn't be and you're giving place to the devil. And make no mistake about it, boy, he will step in. You'll come back to the house and everything's going to be fine. First thing you know, though, you realize that it's just not right. It's just not what it used to be. That's just some kind of a, I want to read the Bible, but I just can't read anymore. I want to pray, but it seems like there's a block. And, and I just, I, I don't feel the same toward my wife. And, and I, things aren't the same as they used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, let me tell you what it is. You've given place to the devil. And he's crept in. And he's made a stronghold. And he doesn't give up that stronghold very quickly. If he can, he will plant himself in your life. And you'll have to be a strong believer and you'll have to know what the power of the blood's about to get him out. To get him out. To get him out. And in your power, you can't move him. He'll laugh in your face. He'll laugh you to insanity if you think you can do it on your own. He will come into your life. He'll come into your life in the most innocent appearing ways. You can be listening to somebody who's an infidel or an agnostic, an atheist. Somebody who starts to cast doubt on the Word of God and upon Christ and upon the finished book and the blood and the stuff you believe. You could be listening to that and that's coming into your head. You're processing that. It goes somewhere. What are you going to do with it? It may begin to take a place in your heart. You don't agree with it. You don't believe it. But it's still there. And as a canker, it begins to eat at your very soul. And every place it eats, a demon takes its place. Every place your faith is weakened, Satan is ready to step in and build a fortification. Every place you yield ground to him, he's ready to take hold of it. And let me tell you something, he's merciless. He'll promise you the moon and send you to hell. He's merciless. 
And when he does take a stronghold, it's not easy to get rid of him. Listen to what she said. Here's what she said. Now listen carefully. She said, I was unable to find a preacher who understood or knew what to do. Isn't that sad? They didn't get it in Theology 101 apparently, huh? I've had every course they've had, folks. What they give you in most Bible colleges and schools is a, they give you a system. They give you a system to work in, like a mechanic or a carpenter or a bricklayer. And if it's out of the ordinary, just, ex, just ignore it. I mean, after all, the sole purpose of a preacher being in most churches today is to build a big congregation. He not care about helping you. He's not interested in preaching to you what can help you. Money's the, the bottom line. All right, and here's what she said. She said, I was unable to find a preacher who understood or knew what to do. In desperation, she said, I turned directly to Jesus himself. <laughs> and to searching the scriptures. She did the best thing she could do. Now, the professor over here at UT may not know who Jesus Christ is. That fellow sitting at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue certainly doesn't know who he is. Most of those people up there in the Senate and in the House don't have a clue. They go to their churches, their religion. But I'm going to tell you somebody who does. Every demon, every unclean spirit, they know exactly who he is. <laughs> they know who he is. Listen to this. She, 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 here's what she says. The Lord Jesus has since delivered me from these demonic entities. Now watch this. This is so important. This is as important as the part where she said, I wouldn't feel anything bad. I was teaching yoga. Into it, head over heels. Felt good. Here's what she says. She says it was a process and not immediate. Her deliverance from demonic experience uh, entities was a process and not a quick fix. One time prayer. What does that mean, preacher? It means this, folks. Satan has a stronghold. And he has more than one stronghold. He never puts his eggs in one basket. Never, 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 never. Once he gets into your life and gets one stronghold, he'll go from that and get another one. You know as well as I do, one sin leads to another. What you started out with is such a little, little no, Mickey Mouse, nothing, you didn't mean anything. And he got into your life with that, it led to something else. There's another stronghold. Then there's another stronghold and another stronghold. You remember the woman that had seven devils cast out of her? Mary Magdalene? Well, those seven devils represented, represented seven different strongholds in that woman's life. And the Lord cast them out. What's that mean, preacher? That means that you've got to deal with them individually. You got a problem with pornography? That's a stronghold. That's right. Let me tell you what that problem with pornography leads to. Lust. Right. That's, right. That's another stronghold. Let me tell you what that leads to. Rape. Right. Yeah. Adultery. Yeah. Adultery. Yeah. That's another stronghold. Yeah. You like to drink? He'll get a stronghold. Right. You know what that leads to? A drunk man is a vulnerable man. Right. Just being drunk. Yeah. You could run over somebody and kill them. And spend the rest of your life locked up in prison somewhere. But alcohol, folks, is a drug. Drugs of a feather flock together. <laughs> Amen? Cocaine and pot and alcohol and crack cocaine and, and all this other date rape drugs and all this other stuff that's out there, it all goes together. So you've got to deal with every one of them. That's the point. You got a problem with pornography? Take it to Jesus and plead the blood on it. And say, Lord Jesus, get this stuff out of my life. This is not me. It will not control me anymore. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood on it. Get out of my life! I confess it's wrong! Free me! If it's gone, go to the next one. Lust. Is that in your life? Then deal with it. Deal with it. Go to the next one. You're unfaithful. You've broken your marriage vow. Walked in here this morning, man told me about his daughter. Her husband's unfaithful. 
All right? Unfaithful. That goes on all the time. Unfaithful. I ain't naming names. Don't ask me. Now, that's nobody's business. That's personal. But unfaithful. Unfaithful. And nothing hurts a woman or a man any more than to find out their mate has been unfaithful. That hurts. I know Hollywood makes all kinds of money on it. I know they glamorize it in the movies. I know that the rock and the rap crowd makes money off of writing songs about it. I realize that you're constantly bombarded with nothing but pure, raw flesh day in and day out. Everything from advertising a pair of blue jeans to anything. This is a sex mad country. But it gets in. You need to get victory over it. Are you listening? If you got this part from this message this morning and really got a hold of it, it'll probably help you more than anything you've had in a long time. And that is that some of you realize that you've got some major problems in your life and you've got to deal with them one at a time. There's no quick solution and quick fix that you've got to get down before God and you've got to say, Lord God, I'm guilty of this. Cleanse me of it. Give me power over it. In the name of Jesus, I don't belong to you. You don't belong to I don't belong to you. You don't have power over me. I plead the blood over it. Get out of my life. And go to the next one. Then the next one. It may be a week later before or a month later before you can get to the next one. He may have to build up your faith. Notice she said it was a process. But notice she said, I'm free. I'm free. I can promise you this. That the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, will cleanse from all sin and it will break the power of sin. He can no longer rule over you. It can break the power of it. Thank God. Hallelujah. And then she said, she appreciates, thank God that you're speaking out against this practice. And I thought to myself, after I read that, I'm going to check out yoga and kundalini yoga. And once again, I found the old guru, the old guru, the Hindu guru. Yoga is an integral part of the Hindu religion. There is a saying. There is no yoga without Hinduism and no Hinduism without yoga. Here's a classroom, Yoga Mountain, up in, uh, up in eastern Tennessee. Yoga in the classroom is written to give school teachers, administrators, and educators the tools to explore yoga with their students. Where's ACLU? San Francisco, California. Yoga in Bay Area public schools boost grades and concentration. I'm sure it boosts concentration. Although it has sparked its share of controversy, mostly from religious zealots who mistakenly believe that it is an outgrowth of either Hinduism or Buddhism. Honey, <laughs> little girl, let the, Buddha, let the Hindu tell you she's so arrogant and so, such a smart aleck in saying that, 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 uh, that the, what they practice has nothing to do with Hinduism, listen to this uh, yogi, Baba Pram. It was quite astonishing to see on the flyer Christian yoga this Thursday night. I could feel the wheels spinning in my brain. Christian yoga, I thought. Now, while Christians can practice yoga, I'm not aware of any Christian teaching about yoga. Yoga is not a Judeo-Christian word. It is not part of the Roman Catholic teachings and certainly not a part of Protestant teachings. It is not found within the King James Version of the Bible. It is a Hindu word, or more correctly, a Sanskrit word from the Vedic civilization. So how did we get Christian yoga? From this I could conclude that Christian yoga could only indicate one of two possibilities, and on and on and on he goes. And, <coughs> and finally says unequivocally, if I can find it in here somewhere, there is no such thing as yoga without Hinduism. It doesn't exist. Little girl here in San Francisco, your little column right here about Christian zealots, you are so quick to criticize us like we don't know what we're talking about. Here she is. You don't know what you're talking about. Let a Hindu tell you, young lady, there is no such thing as yoga without Hinduism. It doesn't exist. They create their own terminology, make their own world, create their own definitions, redefine and repackage everything. Westerners are good for that. Sanitize it, westernize it, and then present it to the people like it's okay because we said it's all right. I thought, no, it's not. No, it's not. 
I took my wife to the Mayo Clinic in 1973. The Mayo Clinic has some of the finest doctors in the world. The Mayo Clinic does not treat anybody. The Mayo Clinic, it's, it's, when, when we went, its sole purpose was to diagnose, but it had the best diagnostic facilities in the world. Then it sends its patients to two or three hospitals it has in Rochester, Minnesota. Right here, look it up for yourself. Here's the Mayo Clinic, yoga. Yoga. What am I telling you? Let me tell you what I'm telling you, okay? Let me break it down very simply. The educational establishment, the health, health establishment, the government. Here's a site right here for corporate America teaching yoga. The government, the corporate America, the whole system is head over heels into demonism. You can, you can call it what you please. It's demonism. Why, preacher? Why, why then? Why? What would you believe that Satan would use to deceive the masses of humanity? Would he not give them the same spirit? Let them receive a demon spirit? Let them become accustomed to spiritual manifestations? And then when that Antichrist steps out to take reins of the earth, the whole populace is ready. That includes the churches. Listen. The greatest cheerleaders of the Antichrist will be the reverends of America. Rick Warren in California at Saddleback Church has the Daniel plan for health. Health. Holistic health. Who doesn't want to be healthy? In his Daniel plan for health, he has three doctors. Dr. Mehmet Oz, Dr. Hyman, and Dr. Amen. For your own edification, forget you ever heard I live. Just type the Daniel plan into the internet. Pull up the three doctors. Look at Reiki, Kundalini Yoga, Tantric Sex. Look at all of it. Just look it up. See what it's talking about. And see what Rick Warren is dishing out to the people of America. And you'll get a good idea of what I'm talking about today. It's not coming. Okay. It's not coming. It's not coming. It'll get so bad that if the Lord Jesus doesn't come and catch you out of it, you'll go down with it. But he's coming for us. Father, in Jesus' name, use what I've said, Lord. I thank you for the testimony of this lady. Her words ring true. God used this to help somebody. There's maybe somebody in this house this morning, Lord, who's seen shadows moving through their house, Lord. They've heard voices. They've seen stuff move. They've had a grandfather or a grandmother or an aunt or an uncle or even a mother or father or sister or brother or a, or a husband or wife dead that showed up in their room and they began to listen to them. God, we pray, show them the truth of what I said today. In thy holy name we ask it. And amen. Let's stand up this morning, folks. Page 227 in your All-American Church hymnal. <laughs> walk, amen. you folks know what a fresh plowed field smells like? I can't remember how far back. I just a kid. I remember that. I remember watching men plow with a mule. That takes some skill. 
But I know what a fresh plowed field smells like. I know what the dirt smells like when it's just first turned over. First turned over. That's what it smells like in here this morning. Spiritually to my soul, I feel it in my soul. A fresh plowed field. It's just been turned over. Some of you are going to take home what I said to you and you're going to think it over. You're going to think about it. Some of you are experiencing what I'm talking about. You're just scared to death to say it to anybody. You, you think they'll think you're nuts. The field's been plowed, folks. It's been plowed. That's all I'm supposed to do. One sows, another waters, and God gives the increase. It's not my place to give the increase. I just put it out. But it is fresh plowed this morning. I smell that dirt first turned up. I smell it. You look at a fresh plowed field and you see the worms crawling around in there. I mean, you get into the detail. It's quite a thing. You ever walked in a fresh, fresh plowed field? They plowed the field up there when I lived up in Union County. A guy came back there. I got a, had a tractor. He came in behind the house there and he plowed that field. He said, look what I just pulled up. I went over there in the field and there was a sledgehammer. Just the, ha just the hammer, just the bottom part, the metal. It was as old and pitted as it could be. The handle had long ago rotted out of it. It was a big, heavy sledgehammer head. I still got it. I put me a handle in it. I set it in my shop. I keep it out there where I can pick it up, look at it, think about it. That thing was under the ground. It was hidden for how long? How many people walked across the top of it? They could have even built a house on it. There that sledgehammer lay buried in the, under the sod all that time. It only came to light when somebody plowed. One more verse. The birds do too, yes sir. They sure do. The birds follow the tractor. scripture and shut up the Lord said there is no temptation taken you but such as is common to man but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation what now turn away from it today if that plow brought to light something and you know it's true turn away from it confess it plead the blood on it amen plead the blood on it God will take you back the devil's a liar he's a deceiver he'll take you back He'll cleanse you and fill you with the Holy Ghost. Fill you with joy. You could go to bed tonight shouting and praising God. But that plow might have uncovered something. And uncovered it in a way where, buddy, it's out there where you can see it. Brother Rue, yeah, just Thank you. 